I started playing the new Yu-Gi-Oh game a couple days ago, and that shit's hard. Like, lose on the first turn, every game kinda hard. That made me realize Eternal isn't quite as bad, but it's still a hard game. So I'm doing a new player video once again. Uh, this one is gonna be 10 tips you should know about squads or duos. Uh, people have been asking for non-solo content, so uh, here we go. So the first thing you need to know about duos and squads is you have teammates, so you can revive your teammates. So when someone dies, they're knocked down to the ground. You can pick them up if uh, they're not fully knocked, but when they become fully knocked, when another team continues to fight them when they're downed, um, they'll eventually just die like you do normally in game, and they'll drop a regen cuff on their body. When you grab this regen cuff, you can go to dock, hospital, or hotel, and there's respawn centers. They're marked on the map with green icons but they'll go away when someone uses them. So if you ever have a teammate get knocked, you can come back for them later, grab their cuff, and then revive them. Super nice. So following that, something I don't think new players do is if there's a respawn center in the red, then you can actually tank your red timer to get it. Um, make sure you have enough time. If you only have like 20 seconds, you're probably not gonna make it in and out. But if you do have the timer, you can go in and then reboot them. The only thing is if the person that you're rebooting has zero timer themselves, they're not going to make it out. <laughs> So people be asking me, what's a good team comp for squads? What's a good character to play in duos? While there are characters um, that are better than others, I think any will work. But with that said, characters that have AoE attacks or attacks that can target more people uh, than just one person at a time are pretty effective in these modes. Um, that's why characters like Adri see a lot more play in team modes and solos but a lot of these characters also get team mode specific nerfs because of this. So for a tip more on the micro level, make your targeting count. As a team, I'd either target the most fed person, like maybe they have a fed Ekion or Eye on the team, that's a good target, or someone who's gonna make a lot of impact. So if they have a Johan, or maybe they have someone like a Heart who can reset the fight, um, that's a solid person to target. But no matter who you target, just make sure you're targeting one person because you'll quickly change the fight to a 2v3, which increases your odds to win greatly. So have you ever had a teammate crawling around on the ground and you're like, please hold still. So something they don't tell you, which I feel like they should, but if you press S, you'll stop. So you don't share animal XP. Some hunt mastery is gained from doing damage, but the bulk of it is when you kill the animal, whoever gets the last hit. So if you have a Nadine, maybe letting her get some last hits, maybe if you're Johan, uh, giving some farm to other people. In my games, I usually split it pretty evenly, um, but just keep in mind that's how XP is going to be given from Hunt Mastery. So if you wanna funnel certain people on your team, you're gonna to wanna to give them last hits. So camping is not a new concept for most of you gamers. Um, it does happen in Eternal Return. It's pretty strategic in more of a ranked setting. In normals, it's pretty sweaty, but hear me out. So if someone dies on your team, um, the other team will probably linger around the body, maybe play some cams, get some console vision, and then when you come back, they can hunt you down and get another kill. Why not just wait for you to res and then hop on you then? Well, getting another kill right after like you res a person doesn't count as an extra one, right? You only get one kill per person in a game. Um, so getting that second kill doesn't do anything for them and they'll waste a res station, which they could use eventually. So that's why people can't bodies. Um, in normals, it's a little weird, but in uh, ranked play, it's definitely effective and something you should keep an eye out for. So for tip number eight, I'm gonna do a bit of an info dump on what the ranked experience is like. So in KR, it's pretty consistently popping ranked duos and squads. So if you wanna get games consistently, that's the server to do so. Um, in NA, there is a push to get ranked games going. Um, Fridays and Sundays are typically the nights that people queue up duos ranked. 
squads never really pops NA. The other servers, I don't really know, but I kind of doubt they're really popping too much. Outside of that, there's a Discord server where all the coordinating for these rank days goes on, so I'll leave that in the description. Alongside that, they also have a bot in there that you can use to see whether or not the queue is popping might save you some time in the long run. So one thing I'd like to point out is I notice a lot of players are all or nothing in team fights, especially if you're playing ranked and you're seeing your team getting slaughtered in the fight, it's okay to dip out. You can rat to a higher placement or potentially even res your team after the fact. Um, even ratting to a higher placement gives you more LP for your team since it's a combination of kills and what place you get. I wouldn't do it in solos though because let's be real, no one wants to sit there and watch you play a squad game for 15 minutes just to rat to a second place. So the most frequently asked thing and maybe the most important tip is revolving around the routing. Everyone asks about routing and ideally when do you want to meet people? And I usually tell people when nightfall hits is when you want to be together. A lot of people are going to start hitting full build, they're going to start grouping up, and you don't want to be caught alone without your teammate or else you're, you're just going to get steamrolled. So some people have custom builds that they use where they can grab stuff for your other teammates and then you can group up a lot earlier. But if you're in normals especially, I think you can just speed run your normal solos build and you'll be okay. Just TP to your teammate whenever you finish. So just for a little cherry on top, here's a bonus tip. If you miss something, you can ping it with alt and your teammates can pick it up for you. Simple enough and you don't have to dwell on things you're missing in certain zones. Okay, so you should be on a good footing if you're new to squads or duos, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments, or you can check out one of the discords in the description and I'm sure you'll find a lot of help. If you're new to the game and you're looking for people to play with, I'd suggest checking out my personal discord. A lot of squads and duos games can be found there. But that's about it for me. Thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna peace out, uh, bye.